In part 1 and 2 of this look at RED's new Dragon sensor, we explored dynamic range, latitude, diffusion filters, and the IRR issues of the new sensor and how it stacks up against the old MX sensor. In this final installment, we'll be taking a closer look at low light, color, compression, and fill ratios. And at the end of this video, I'm going to wrap up the entire series by sharing my recommendations for you on how to get the most out of either sensor. As with the rest of this series, I'm only going to cover the highlights that you need to know in this video. If you really want to pixel peep and look at every single frame that we shot, they're available for download in all of their 6K and 5K goodness below this video. All right, so I've got these clips loaded up in uh, Final Cut X here. And before we get started, just a quick note about what's going on with these frames. So I took each of these frames and I blew them up so you just see this chart here. So we've got the daylight scene and then we've got this tungsten scene here. So then I just blew them up and now we see that. Uh, as we take a look at these frames, you'll want to pay attention to this white dot as well as to the orientation of the rest of these dots. That's where you're going to see the differences between these uh, two frames. Uh, this white dot represents the white, gray, and black, and then obviously all these colors represent the colors uh, on this chart. And they should be headed toward their intended ve vector. So red should go towards red. Uh, skin tones, which are all these guys, should be lining up on this vector here. The white dot should be you know, in the center. So that's a quick rundown of how to read this vector scope. Taking a look at this daylight versus tungsten with the dragon. Oh, before I get started, uh, you might want to know what uh, color and gamma space I'm in. So with the dragon, I am uh, taking a look at this in dragon color and red gamma 4. With the MX, I'm taking a look at red color 3 and red gamma 4. The reason for the change in color space is, you know, dragon color is obviously for the dragon, and red color 3 is, you know, the last version of red color, which was for the MX. So that's why I chose those. Okay, so on to the rest of the results. So we got daylight and tungsten. As I flip between these two, uh, um, you know, there's not an epic change going on, uh, sorry about that pun, uh, but there is a, um, you know, bit of a change. Uh, as we jump over to the MX, we will, you know, see a bigger change going on uh, than we see here. So we've got our daylight and tungsten, daylight and tungsten. So um, our skin tones are becoming a little less saturated and they're moving a bit further away from our line here in tungsten. Um, you know, not a huge amount, but but a little bit. The other thing that's going on is our gr uh, green dot and our cyan uh, dot are bouncing a bit away from the intended vectors that they should be on under tungsten than in daylight. Uh, um, so really that's the biggest difference there is in the cyan and green channel. And then with the um, skin tones, they, you know, all tend to move away. So there's, there's some difference, but uh, minor, not a huge difference between tungsten and daylight when it comes to the dragon. Moving on to the uh, Epic MX, this is where we're going to see a bigger shift. So we've got daylight and tungsten, daylight and tungsten. So as far as the bigger shift goes, notice how everything jumps over towards magenta and, you know, kind of the blue, everything goes right. Um, so the entire, you know, vector scope just all jumps. Um, so that jump towards magenta is uh, part of the reason why I think that there's this uh, red look and it, you know, becomes fairly easy to see when something was shot on the red, or at least with the red MX anyway, um, is has to do a little bit with this, you know, color shift that's going on right there, at least that's part of the reason. Uh, we can see, you know, our dots here are all shifting more towards magenta. Um, our skin tones are fairly close to the, the, the line. And actually that uh, shift towards magenta is actually bringing some of those uh, skin tone um, dots actually a little bit closer. So that kind of helps out with the skin tone there, but it does make a, you know, shift towards magenta, which I don't particularly like, but that's you know kind of what's going on. So let's compare the two sensors together. And now we've got the dragon in daylight and then 
the MX in daylight. And both of these, you know, seem to be fairly, fairly accurate as I jump back and forth. So Dragon MX, um, the first thing that immediately jumps out to me is the Dragon is a lot more saturated. So not only are these colors brighter here, but you know, they're further out on their, uh, towards their vectors, which means they're more saturated. Um, and the other thing that stands out are, are all of these uh, skin tone lines. So take a look at that. So Dragon MX, Dragon MX, the Dragon, all of the, all of the skin tone patches are closer to this vector. So it means the skin tones are more accurate in the Dragon than they are in the MX. Uh, so that's a huge win, uh, at least in my book, because I want people to look their best and want skin tones to look accurate. Um, so the more uh, I can have these line up along that vector, the better. Let's jump on over to Tungsten, and now I'll flip back and forth, Dragon MX, Dragon MX, Dragon MX. And as we take a look at that, uh, again, we see this you know magenta shift in the MX footage. So everything jumps over towards magenta and you know stays fairly neutral in the Dragon. Of course, there is a bit of a shift going on towards yellow and a little bit towards green and this you know sh ideally should be centered up it's not but it is fairly close and uh, on the mx it is now you know shifted towards blue slash magenta uh, if you're having a hard time seeing that here in this vector scope take a look at this gray patch here as i flip back and forth uh, you can also see it in the white uh, patch too but uh, as i flip back and forth those patches become more magenta and in the uh, dragon footage, it's more yellow. So, you know, magenta and yellow, magenta and yellow. Um, and if I have to choose one, I definitely want to go with the dragon. Uh, these skin tones and everything, you know, being just a touch more yellow is a lot more acceptable to me because that's closer to, you know, skin tone than magenta. I don't like uh, purple people. Uh, purple people eaters are bad. So, yeah, uh, the dragon definitely has um, better skin tone rendition, especially in uh, tungsten light. Uh, and speaking of uh, kind of recommendations, um, when it comes to shooting with either of these sensors, I highly recommend shooting in daylight if you want to get the best results from either of these chips. And of course, you know, we weren't seeing anything egregious in the tungsten. So, you know, if you use uh, Red Gamma 4, you, you know, you'll be fine in either daylight or in tungsten. But if you want the most pristine uh, image and the most accurate image, then shoot in daylight. And uh, when it comes to skin tones and the most accurate colors, then you definitely want to go with the Dragon. The Dragon was performing a lot better with uh, skin tones and, um, and also just the direction that the vectors uh, we're going with each particular color. And uh, if you're shooting under the tungsten light with the MX, then you'll want to pay attention to that kind of magenta shift that was going on, and you'll want to adjust for that in the grade. Oh, and when it comes to Red Gamma 4, um, I think that's a great starting place for either of these uh, sensors, for either the Dragon or the MX. Red Gamma 4 is a great place to start your grade. Uh, of course, it's not giving you all the information, you know, like Red Log Film will, will, but if you're looking for a quick and easy place to start to grade your footage, then uh, start with Red Gamma 4 and you'll be in a good starting ballpark to finesse your grade from there. Uh, if you want more information, and you don't want a look built in, of course, go with a red log film. All right, before we get started here, I just want to go over quickly uh, fill ratios in case you're not familiar with them. Uh, anything from like a two to one to a three to one is pretty typical for what you'll see on sitcoms. It's pretty brightly lit. Uh, there is a little bit of modeling going on, but uh, it's not completely flat. Uh, so that's what you're used to seeing if you're, you know, watching your traditional uh, sitcom. From four to one to eight to one, it's a lot more moody and uh, cinematic or dramatic looking. Um, that's typically where I like to live in my um, key to fill ratios. You know, somewhere a bit more on the moody uh, side that you know tends to model uh, the face a little bit more. Anything over an eight to one is really ballsy and really gutsy, at least when it comes to um, lighting for film. Today with our digital cameras, our digital cameras see a lot more into the shadows than uh, film does. And that's r true with the uh, MX and with the Dragon. Uh, both of those uh, sensors do a great job all the way up to eight to one. So I'm not gonna bother with taking a look 
at uh, any of those you know previous contrast or those uh, key to fill ratios. If you want to download the footage and play with them yourselves, feel free to have at it. But anything uh, down to eight to one is com completely safe and completely uh, fine. Uh, we're going to have some more fun by taking a look at the extremes. So we'll uh, load up Red Cine X here and we'll start with 11 to one. So as we take a look at this or, you know, Key is at uh, four. Our fill is at eleven and a half, or at one and a half, uh, which is eleven to one. And now we will zoom in so we can see really what's going on here. As we take a look at this, pay attention to um, you know Tim's nose around the cheek area, just uh, all the the side of the face. That's where you'll be able to see the biggest difference going on. So at eleven to one, everything looks totally acceptable. Again, I'll try to play a little bit uh, of the footage here. Um, it's a little taxing on the system that I have trying to play and record. Um, but anyway, so, you know, not a lot of crawlies. Everything looks fine. And by crawlies, I mean noise. And we'll jump over to 16 to 1. So now we're at 16 to 1. And for me, uh, personally, I would stay away from 16 to 1. Uh, I'll play this back here. So you can see the noise um, actually you know, moving around and not looking all that great to my eye. Um, so I prefer to stay away from this level. So 16 to one, uh, in my imagery. Now we are at a 23 to one. So 23 to one, I'd actually use this. Uh, so let's play this back. Um, so a lot of that noise or, you know, crawling around, um, gets hidden in the, you know, darker shadow regions, you know, cause it's, more contrasty than the image was before. So here's the, you know, 16 to one, and uh, which, you know, shows more detail. And now here's the 23 to one. So, you know, if I was gonna go, go gutsy with my uh, key to fill ratios, you know, on the dragon, skip over anything in between 11 to one and 23 to one um, on either side of that, totally usable, totally fine. Uh, let's see what's happening in the MX. So now we're back at the uh, 11 to one ratio. Again, everything looks nice and clean. Everything looks good. Not surprised about that. And now we're on to our 16 to one. And I'll play some of this back. And this actually looks cleaner. Um, you know, there's less noise going on here in the uh, MX sensor than in the Dragon. So I would actually use 16 to one um, or anything in between 11 to one to 23 to one uh, if I'm shooting on the MX and 23 to one. Let's just check that to see how this is looking, which, you know, all looks great. Um, you know, I'll play a little of that footage back. Yeah. So totally, totally acceptable. As so, when it comes to my recommendations uh, with the MX or with the Dragon sensor, and use go ahead and use any of the traditional contrast ratios. If you're going to be more ballsy and a little bit more gutsy with extreme ratios, and you're shooting on the Dragon, I'd avoid uh, ratios in between 11 to one and 23 to one. Uh, as long as you stay on either side of that, uh, you'll have some great looking imagery. If you're in between that, uh, just be aware that there could be you know some additional noise in the uh, shadow area. All right, so I've got the clips loaded up here in Red Cine X, and just a quick note about what I did is that I lit this scene to a T4 at ISO 800, cryptic, I know. And then what I did is I uh, added ND filtration uh, to each exposure and compensated with the ISO. Uh, that way, you know, lighting stays consistent and the light, the, the camera actually sees less light, and so, you know, it simulates a low light shooting environment. Anyway, uh, let's jump in and see this at 100%. There we go. And so we're at ISO 800 on the Dragon. And just taking a look here, everything looks nice and clean as it should. Uh, nothing too objectionable going on, uh, which it really shouldn't. And at ISO 1600, uh, we start to notice a little bit of noise here, um, you know, over here, down here on the shirt. Uh, so there's just a tad bit of noise going on. You can, you know, see a little bit of this uh, red 
uh, noise going on here. Nothing ob objectionable. I'd totally use this. Not a big deal. And 3,200. So now this has jumped to the place where it's objectionable for me. I would not use this. Um, you'd have to hold a gun to my head and say, use it. So yeah, uh, just too much red stuff going on. And it's just too uh, grainy. Um, it doesn't really fit the aesthetic that I like. I'm going to try to play this back and I'm recording at the same time, so I don't really know how much or how well that will work. But just watch the image as it kind of crawls around. There we go. So the whole thing just really, really crawls around and doesn't doesn't look good, at least not to my eye. Uh, you might be able to salvage this and you know use it maybe through like neat video or some other you know cleanup um, algorithm maybe in Resolve. So you potentially could get a usable image out of this, but this is really pushing the limits. Just for grins and giggles, let's go over to 6400. This is now just all kinds of awful. Um, you know, we've got red noise everywhere and, um, you know, it just doesn't look good. Uh, I, I do know that red is working on a new firmware um, that's supposed to help with this uh, solution. So, you know, we'll see what that does uh, when it comes out. But as of right now, until a new firmware is out, it's definitely not um, a good thing on this camera. For grins and giggles, here's the uh, 12,000 ISO. So that's definitely not not usable. That's all kinds of ugly. Uh, let's go over to the MX. So jumping over to the MX, we are now at 800. Everything looks great as it should. Nice and clean, totally usable. Jumping over to 1600. Uh, this does look cleaner than the uh, Epic Dragon does. Um, however, you know, both 1600 on both uh, sensors, totally usable, totally fine. Nothing bad going on here. And now we're at 3200. Um, 3200 does look a little bit better to my eye on the MX than it did on the Dragon. Uh, in both situations, I still would not use this. I mean, you'd literally have to hold a gun to my head. The image just crawls around um, and I don't like that. Uh, that's distracting to my eye. Um, so I would prefer not to use either sensors at uh, 3200, but the MX does seem to be a little bit cleaner there. Now we are jumping to 6400 and definitely not uh, clean enough for anything, I don't think. I might be able to clean up that 3200 ISO image, but the 6400, there's just way too much going on here. And grins and giggles, let's check out 12,000. Yeah, 12,000 is just not not acceptable at all. Uh, um, just way too much craziness going on. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of what's going on as far as low light shooting is concerned with the MX and the Dragon. As far as actual recommendations go, if you want a low light camera, really look somewhere else. Uh, check out like the Sony F5, F55, uh, or the A7S, um, or check out anything from the Canon C series. Uh, both Sony and Canon have done a great job at uh, producing cameras that do really well in, in low light. I mean, you wouldn't be seeing these noise issues um, on either sets of those cameras. Uh, um, I, don't, I really don't think that the Red Epic, either the MX or the Dragon, is ever going to be a low light monster. There's just way too many pic pixels crammed into a tiny space to really make that make that feasible. That's not where these cameras shine. Uh, they shine in other areas, uh, just not low light. So you can push these cameras up to 1600, 2000, uh, maybe even 3200 if you're a little bit more tolerant of all those little crawlies, of all that noise going on. Um, but really that's probably gonna be your upper limit is 3200. So if you need something more sensitive than that, uh, just look elsewhere. So before we get started here, I just wanna mention a couple of things uh, that I noticed throughout this uh, entire shoot. Uh, the first thing that I noticed is that the Dragon requires a lot more storage space than the MX does. Uh, we shot on 128 gig cards uh, for both cameras, the Dragon, that almost got completely filled up, while the MX, that was only about halfway, and both cameras were shot at a five to one compression ratio. So there's a lot more data going through that Dragon sensor than there is with the MX. Uh, the other thing, uh, specifically when it comes to compression, I didn't notice a big difference between the uh, Dragon and the MX sensor. 
And so I'm only gonna show you the results from the Dragon. And you can just apply that to the MX. If you really wanna see all the differences and, and pixel peep, then download the R3Ds that are both below this video and you can you know take a look at all the results from the MX sensor. Uh, we shot all the way from you know five to one up to 18 to one. I'm just gonna show you what stood out to me here. Uh, the, uh, another note about the test is that I shot it at a high ISO um, for uh, the reason of trying to really stress things out and really see where the differences are, um, you know, shooting things, you know, properly at a, you know, lower ISOs, you know, it's, it's going to be harder to see uh, the, di the differences between uh, the different compression rates. Uh, so shooting at a higher ISO is, is going to allow me to see uh, more of the differences and more of the nuances and be able to point them out to you uh, easier. So I've got things loaded up here in Red Cine X and we'll take a look at what's going on here. We're at 100, or we're seeing the entire frame right now. So we're gonna zoom in at 100% and go down and take a look at Tim's sleeve and shirt here. So we've got some fine detail, some fine pattern lines in his shirt uh, going horizontally and vertically. And I'll just do a little bit of playback. Uh, so yeah, all that detail is there, which you know looks great. We're at a five to one compression ratio right now. Now we will bump on over to seven to one. And you know we still see those lines there. We'll do a little bit of playback. Uh, details still there. Um, you know that the noise has gotten just a touch more blocky, but you know it's hard to notice from five to one to seven to one. Uh, we'll jump on over to twelve to one, and this is where we start to lose detail. So we're losing detail in our you know horizontal lines and in our vertical lines. Um, so we'll do a little playback. And yeah, we're, we're losing the fine detail at, at 12 to one. And we'll jump on over to 18 to one and it just continues to uh, to worsen. So, you know, we've almost lost all the um, horizontal and we've still got a little bit of vertical, but you know, it's getting mushed together in, in the noise. The, the noise has become bigger and blockier and um, so we're, we're picking up less detail at 18 to one, which you know is really of no surprise. It's more compressed. Uh, we'll move on over to the Tenba logo here. So we've got this Tenba logo uh, in a dark area and some dark textures next to it. Now we're gonna work backwards here. So we're at 18 to one. And now we'll jump on over to 12 to one. Uh, so we can see a little bit more delineation in this A area here at 12 to one. Now we'll jump on over to seven to one and just a touch more, you know, not a huge difference. And now we're at five to one. So again, just a little bit more, not nothing huge, but um, there is just a wee bit more in the five to one as far as this dark shadow area goes. Let's move on over to the iMac and the other uh, cinema screen. So we're gonna use these gray areas right here and also right here to take a look at our grain pattern or our noise pattern at different compression levels. So I'll do a little bit of playback. And everything is nice and tight and small, um, which is you know how I prefer my uh, noise or my quote unquote grain to look. Um, I like those you know tight patterns. It, it's a lot more filmic to to my eye. So five to one is looking very nice. Jump on over to seven to one. Seven to one has gotten a little bit more blocky. So let's take a look at that. Um, again, not ob objectionable. It totally works. It's just not as tight as five to one. Jump on over to 12 to one. And here we are now, you know, things again continue to get more blocky and we'll do a little bit of playback. Yeah, it still looks more blocky. I mean, this is on the verge and not working for my own personal taste. Uh, so I'd, I wanna stay away from this. And 18 to one. Now we're definitely looking like noise or video noise to, to my eye. I'll do a little bit of playback. And it's just big, blocky, and chunky. That's not how I like my noise to look. I like it to be fine, tight, and small. So we're at 18 to one right now and five to one. Just look how much that cleans up as I go from five to one. Now we're over to 18 to one. A lot more blocky, a lot more just, that's yuck. That's just not what I want. Um, so 
lower compression gets you a tighter noise pattern. And as far as it comes to my recommendations, um, some recommendations I have for you when it comes to compression are if hard drive space is a concern for you, then really you should be choosing a different camera. Neither the MX nor the Epic are gonna be a good fit if you're concerned about hard drive space. Uh, you've chosen the wrong camera. When, and when it comes to compression levels, you're going to want to use a higher compression The or you're, you're gonna to wanna to use a lower compression when you use a higher ISO. The lower compression is gonna give you a more filmic look to your noise um, at higher ISO levels. So when it comes to specific compression rates, you'll wanna use a five to one if you need everything and you want the finest noise pattern possible. Seven to one is gonna be a great fit for most situations. Um, anytime you go out and shoot, most of the time seven to one should be totally fine. Uh, um, it, you know, looked good to my eye, the noise was just a little bit bigger than five to one. Um, so if, if you, you know, want a nice trade off, seven to one seems to be a good fit. 12 to one, well, I'd go there if you really need that extra space. But again, if you're concerned about space, choose a different camera. And 18 to one, I would avoid that if at all possible. Um, I don't know why you'd be shooting on, you know, a great camera like the Epic and then choose to, you know, shoot at 18 to one. That just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, get enough hard drive space and shoot at seven to one or five to one. So to wrap up this entire series, here's how you can get the most out of either of these two sensors. If you're shooting with the MX, shoot using daylight color temperature lights at an ISO of 800 to 2000. Anytime you're using NDs, make sure you block IR pollution at 750 nanometers starting at an N9. For a more filmic looking noise pattern, shoot at lower compression ratios. Five to one's the best and seven to one should be fine for most situations. As you expose your image, watch your highlights as they clip fast and they look pretty nasty. And finally, if you want your talent to look more attractive and you wanna take some of that digital edge off of your footage, then I recommend using either a Schneider Hollywood Blackmagic or a Tiffin Satin Filter. If you're shooting on the Dragon sensor, use daylight color temperature lights at an ISO of 800 to 2000. However, if you want a cleaner image, you can choose a lower ISO and not suffer the same kind of issues that you do with the MX sensor, especially when it comes to IR. With the Dragon, you no longer have to worry about IR problems because they've taken care of that for you. And when it comes to getting a more filmic looking noise pattern, choose a lower compression ratio, like five to one or seven to one. The highlight roll off on the Dragon is also a lot more filmic than on the MX. So while you should still keep an eye on your highlights, you don't have to be as concerned about it as you do as if you were shooting with the MX. And just like the MX, if you want your talent to look more attractive and you wanna remove some of that digital edge off of your footage, then use either the, either the Schneider Hollywood Blackmagic or the Tiffin Satin Filters. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below this video, and then come join me in the next video. Mm -hmm.